It's almost poetic how a small regional jet program from Bombardier has transformed into a flagship of Airbus's single-aisle strategy, almost killing the A319neo. And even though the program was called a risky bet from a Canadian manufacturer, the aircraft we now know as the Airbus A220 is no longer simply filling gaps, it's commanding them. With the A220H100 and 300, which are increasing their market share in short-haul and medium-haul fleets worldwide, the question many analysts are asking is not if, but when, the A220-500 will take to the skies. And more importantly, what kind of threat will it pose not only to Boeing's 737 MAX 8, but to Airbus's very own golden child, the A320neo? Let's take a closer look at this topic. The A220's success story is already an aviation legend. Engineered for fuel efficiency, operational flexibility, and superior passenger comfort, it's become the aircraft of choice for airlines like Air Baltic, Air France, as well as Delta and JetBlue on the other side of the ocean. At the heart of its appeal lies the aircraft's clean sheet design, advanced aerodynamics, lightweight composite materials, and ultra-efficient Pratt & Whitney PW1500G geared turbofan engines. The result? A jet that's 25% more efficient than older models and significantly quieter, allowing airlines to expand regional, but also long and thin operations and meet modern noise compliance standards, which are getting more and more important, especially in the Western Hemisphere. The A220-300, seating up to 150 passengers, sits comfortably in the upper tier of the regional jet category, but there's been persistent market murmuring around something bigger. The A220-500, a potential game-changer designed to seat around 170 passengers, pushing the family firmly into the lower end of the mainline single-aisle segment. The 9500, long anticipated by carriers like Air France and Breeze Airways, could serve as a true successor to the A320CO and a direct rival to the 737 MAX 8. Technically, Airbus already has the foundation for this aircraft. Bombardier's original C-Series design allowed headroom for future growth. The A220's wing is robust enough to support a stretched fuselage. The engines, though currently exclusive to Pratt & Whitney, offer sufficient margin to handle a heavier airframe, especially with software optimization and engine tuning. However, as Airbus contemplates launching the NA500, key challenges remain. Among them, engine supply reliability, production ramp-up, and perhaps most politically, the risk of cannibalizing its own A320neo program. Let's take the technical side first. The A220-500 would likely retain the same 35.1-meter wingspan and basic fuselage cross-section, but stretch the airframe by several frames forward and aft of the wing box. This would push passenger capacity to about 157 in a typical two-class configuration, with a 170 or more in high-density layouts. The range would likely decrease slightly from the A220-300's 3,600 nautical miles due to increased weight, but it would still comfortably serve most transcontinental and intra-European or American routes. But the real draw isn't just range, it's economics. The A220-500 would offer a lower cost per seat than the A320neo on short to medium haul routes, particularly those under four hours. With its lower empty weight and higher efficiency engines, the 500 could be the narrow body sweet spot airlines have been waiting for. For a carrier like Air France, which already operates a growing fleet of A220-300s, a common type rating would allow pilots to transition seamlessly between the two models, reducing training and crew scheduling complexity. This gets especially interesting as Air France hasn't yet decided about the A320 CEO replacement, and this is an important customer, as it's located in the same country as Airbus headquarters. Yet, here's where it gets complicated. The A220-500, even though it would be a perfect competitor to the 737 MAX 8, it risks eating into Airbus's own A320neo orders. The A320neo is a bestseller, over 4,000 units ordered globally, and remains the backbone of Airbus's single-aisle dominance. The dilemma Airbus faces is a classic one in business strategy, should it disrupt its own product line before a competitor does. It's not just theoretical, 
airlines have been asking for the A22500. Air France has already indicated that it would evaluate a stretched A220 if Airbus made it available, viewing it as a possible A320 CEO replacement. Breeze Airways, meanwhile, has hinted at its long-term ambitions for a higher-capacity A220 to service denser routes once its current 300 fleet matures. And then there's the issue of engines. Pratt & Whitney's GTF engines, though revolutionary, have faced ongoing reliability issues that have led to grounding headaches for operators worldwide. If Airbus moves forward with the A22500, many argue it would be wise to introduce a second engine supplier, perhaps CFM International's Leap Engines, to diversify its risk profile. But integrating a second engine type would require extensive redesigns and recertification, potentially delaying the program by years. From a production standpoint, Airbus is already scaling up A220 manufacturing at its Mirabelle facility in Canada and its U.S. plant in Mobile, Alabama. The goal is to reach a monthly production rate of 14 aircraft by 2026. Adding a third variant would place additional pressure on the supply chain, which remains fragile in the post-COVID era. Nevertheless, the investment could be worthwhile if the Nida 500 attracts major launch customers and opens new revenue channels. Strategically, the A22500 would allow Airbus to offer an aircraft lineup that mirrors its A320 family, but in a more modernized package. Picture this. The A22100 replaces the aging E-Jets and CRJ900s. The A22300 replaces older A390s and smaller 737s. The A22500 begins to displace A320 CEOs and MAX 8s on regional and high-frequency short-haul routes. This segmentation could allow Airbus to free up A320neo production slots for larger and more profitable A321neo and A321XLR orders, particularly attractive given the runaway success of the A321XLR in capturing long-range single-aisle demand. And what about Boeing? The A22500 would place even more pressure on the 737 MAX 8, already squeezed between the low-range MAX 9 and the unpopular MAX 7. With no clean sheet design in sight and the NMA postponed, Boeing would be left to defend its market position with aging airframes and incremental updates, while Airbus continues innovating with composite designs and ultra-efficient operations. So will Airbus launch it? All signs point to a matter of when, not if. The market wants it. Airlines are asking for it. Airbus has the engineering headroom to build it. The only constraint is managing internal dynamics to avoid undermining its A320 cash cow, at least until the A321 and future long-range variants absorb enough demand to justify shifting the middle of the market down to the A220 line. The A22500 may still be on the drawing board, but it already casts a long shadow. If Airbus pulls the trigger, it won't just be launching a new aircraft, it'll be redefining the heart of the narrow-body market. What do you think? Will the A22500 be Airbus's next big move, or should they hold off to protect their flagship? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.